All right, welcome to class. We're going to continue discussing the age of the universe, the age of the earth. We said uh, last week this is an extremely important topic because if the universe is not billions of years old, the argument for evolution is over. You win in the first round. And we've been going through some of the different scientific ways to show the earth cannot be billions of years old. Well, now we've covered things in space. Now we're going to look at things in on the earth, okay? We've covered just a couple in the last last week. We're going to go through a few more. All right. Welcome back, folks, to the Creation Science Hour and a Half. Kent Hovind, Jonathan Sampson, live August the 17th, 2005, defending the idea that the Bible is literally true. God made the world in six days. The evolution theory is the dumbest and most dangerous religion in the history of planet Earth. And you can call us at 850-479-DINO, extension 136, or instant message us at Dr. Dino Live, D-R-D-I-N-O, L-I-V-E. Okay. Who's on the phone there, Jonathan? Uh, yeah, we have Jared on the phone. Jared. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Hey, um, let's talk about radiometric dating. Is that cool? Sure. Okay. So, have you ever heard of uh, isochron? Yes, isochron dating, I have. Okay, and do you understand how those work? Uh, a little bit. There's a good article about the isochron dating and the problems with it on ICR.org. It's an impact article from about two years ago. Uh, I understand the basic concept, but I would not be the one to talk to. They would probably be the one you'd want to. Uh... But anyway. So you're, not, you're not willing to discuss isochron? Then? I don't think I know enough to... to, to about it to answer the questions about it. Wow, I'm surprised. Okay. Um, I mean, I could read. I can go back and reread the article, but uh, you know, in my uh, uh, in what I do, you know, it, it's you're the first person to ever bring it up. So really, yeah. Wow. Okay, that's that's also interesting. Um, what I was going to say is that up until about um, I'd say eight days ago, the creationist argument against radiometric dating was very effective against me, and it had been pretty much my whole life. In fact, I had realized um, several of the, pro the potential problems with uh, radiometric dating as a kid. But when I learned about uh, carbon dating from I was in like, you know, grade school, I, I was like, well, how do you know, you know that the original concentrations were what you think they were, and wouldn't that throw it all off and that kind of stuff? And for that reason, I've been very skeptical about uh, the age of the Earth as you know, contemporary scientists uh, declare that it is. And when I read about isochron, that was what completely changed my opinion. About 10 days ago, I read this uh, article on Talk Origins, and uh, by the way, I also went to other sites and read about it, just, you know, I didn't rely only on Talk Origins. Okay. And I, I sat down and uh, did some of the math on it, because they leave a lot of the, the algebraic details out of these articles, um, I guess because they think that people wouldn't understand them or something. So I went through all the math, and I, and I realized um, that this is very rigorous. The, the, the mathematics behind it is very solid. And uh, it's not perfect because, again, it relies on empirical evidence. But the conclusion that I came to is that I believe that the Earth is old now. And I, I haven't believed that until, like I said, about a week and a half ago. Before that, I didn't know what to think. I didn't believe that the Earth was as young as you think it is, and I also didn't believe it was, it was as old as evolution would say that it is. I was kind of like uh, amb ambivalent. I didn't know. Okay, did you check out the um, uranium, thorium, uh, thorium, and lead articles on false isochromes by Andrew Snelling of ICR? Uh, I may have. I read several different creationist rebuttals to the idea of isochromes. From ICR? I have read that specific one. I think I, I, I did see a little bit from ICR. I, I looked at the rate project. See, well, let me finish what I was going to say about this. Okay. The conclusion that I came to is that um, it's, it would be in incredibly conspiratorial or conspiracy theory minded to think that this many isochrons are wrong if, and, and that the convergence of them is wrong. You know, whenever, whenever you do lava flows and you do like rubidium strontium and potassium argon and they, like, they go to the same answer a, a lot. The only way for this to be compatible with a young Earth scenario is if the um, decay rates of these isotopes have actually changed in time. That's the only thing that I can think of that could possibly nullify this. And that's why I, I wanted you to tell me uh, anything that you know about the creation of, say, about these rates changing. Because I went to the Rate Project site and... Uh, I couldn't find anything about them actually showing that these rates have changed. I, I, I saw articles about uh, zircons and uh, uranium decay and polonium halos and things like that, but I never saw anything like uh, any empirical evidence that uh, you know, potassium argon dating is wrong because the decay rate of potassium has changed, which is what it would take to convince me. 
Okay, I understand. Um, you, first of all, to look at the bigger picture here, you do understand that getting the Earth to be billions of years old is only the first of hundreds of obstacles you'd have to overcome for the evolution theory to be true. That is absolutely correct, Ken. And I actually, yeah. I tell my friends, I had a couple of conversations just recently with people where I, where I told people, I told them, you know, I believe that the Earth is old now, but I still don't believe in evolution. I'm very honest about that. And that, that bothers a lot of people because they think it's just kind of axiomatic or something that's completely obvious. It's not completely obvious. When I, when I look at the fossil record, to be, to be totally honest, I don't see the evidence of gradualism. I don't see it. And I argue with Martin about this and with other people, but I'm still open to the possibility. Right. Well, you admit Stephen Gould and Niles Eldridge and many others would agree with you. Yeah, that's absolutely. And, that, and that's one of the reasons why, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Because they realized there were problems with this. And, and, the and all the records just does not agree. Right. I mean, may, maybe it is because the fossil <clears> record is, is, is extremely, you know, gappy and, and filled with holes. I mean, that is a possible explanation, but it's not very satisfying. Is it, a, is it an explanation? Is it a possible explanation that it didn't happen is why it's that way? It is a possibility. But Good. then what you're, what you're left with is old Earth creationism, which I, I find uh, somehow less believable than young Earth creationism. Like okay. it, it, it makes less sense to me. Well, if you checked out the, um, you know, I've got the Ray Project book at home, and I, I recall specifically seeing um, accelerated nuclear decay articles in there, and I was able to find them on the ICR website okay. in their research papers area. So they're all going to be technical, which is what you want. Um, there's one here called Accelerated Decay Theoretical Models by Chaffin, uh, Eugene Chaffin. And that is, let's see here, it's icr.org slash pdf slash research. And uh, that has the Accelerated Decay Theoretical Models, Helium Diffusion Rates Support Accelerated Nuclear Decay by Humphreys, Austin, Baumgartner, and Snelling. Um, and, you know, still even more discussing the whole acceler Accelerated Nuclear Decay hypothesis. So if that's what you're looking for, that's where you can find them. Yeah, I'll, I will definitely check that out. Thank you. Uh, now, have you, have you come across anything in your reading, because if I recall, it's, it's been seven or eight years ago that I read this, but that the solar sunspot cycle seems to have an effect on the decay rate of some of these elements. I don't think that it should have a, a, an effect on the decay rate per se. It, it might, well, it might in the sense that if radiation is bombarding these particles, that it's uh, changing the observed rate of decay, but I don't think that it would, it would ever be enough to be truly significant. I mean, we're, we're talking about um, elements that are buried in bedrock that is miles deep, you know, and uh, I don't think the sun's radiation could get down that deep. But, but yeah, well, neutrinos go right through the Earth. Yes, but neutrinos also don't interact with uh, matter very much at all. That's why mm -hmm. it took decades and decades to discover that there's any you know, evidence for their existence at all. Mm -hmm. You do agree that... Uh, I Radiometric elements, or the, um, I guess, amount of their byproducts can be changed by outside interference other than decay, right? Absolutely, and that's okay. what was so interesting to me about the isochron method is that yeah. it actually is able to detect that occurrence. 